Hello everyone, my name is Rochelle Innocent and I'm the founder and CEO of Project Purpose. Welcome to our channel. Our community is focused on fostering the intellectual and character development in children. We do this through our parent-child workshops that are focused on four themes, autonomy, self-efficacy, compassion, and self-concept in order to cultivate grit, perseverance, and resilience in each child. And we are so thrilled to be offering one of the first of its kind, digital, virtual, and continuous learning environments, enabling parents and children to connect from all around the world. At Project Purpose, our overarching mandate is to renew and rebuild family, community, and relationships. Our different social media platforms provide us with an opportunity to have discussions on all topics that relate to family, community, and relationships with ourselves as well as with others, with a primary focus on mental health and education. More precisely, the ways that the institutions of mental health and education play a role and have played a role in our societies at large. These discussions and debates provide us with an opportunity to think critically about what needs to change within these structures for us to live up to our bold slogan, support, protect, and empower each child through youth-focused development, better known as leadership in juvenescence. We recognize that in valuing our children's leadership potential, this also translates as recreating and co-creating environments, both socially and politically, that will enable our children to thrive. For those of you who are particularly keen on the topic, we also write thought pieces every other Sunday. And we actually just dropped a thought piece this past Sunday, so be sure to meander over to the website and check out our online content. If it is the case that you are looking for a listening alternative, well, we're available on 10 different podcast platforms for your listening leisure, and we've provided you with access to the links in the description down below. Now, as is the convention, be sure to subscribe, hit that post notification bell so that you are aware of every time we post. And of course, if you like our conversations and you want to keep them going, like, comment, and share this segment. Let's get into it. I don't name if it ain't Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to our channel. For those of you who are new, we cover topics that relate to mental health, mental wellness, and education on a week by week basis. And this week, our topic of discussion is education. And on the topic of education this week, we're going to be focalizing on the importance of language, specifically language acquisition. And the reason why this is important because the best way to expand our scope of reference is to always have the dial on expanding our language or our capacity to communicate, the words we use with which to communicate, to focus on nuance. And there are different ways to go about that. I just want to talk on the topic of language expansion as an important and integral way to expand our scope of reference and develop different ways of perceiving the world around us. And I think that that is so important because a lot of us, when we aren't focused on language expansion, when we've reached a steady state, so we're no longer actively learning and expanding our language and expanding our our understanding of the world around us, our scope of reference, much of what we experience becomes par for the course and makes it much easier for us to fall into beliefs and patterns of believing that are fairly black and white because we make them fit into the compartment that we've already established. And when you're constantly learning, when you're constantly getting insight into different areas of expertise, into different schools of thought, whether that's academic or whether that's our lived experiences, right? There are different lifestyles and ways of living and ways of being and ways of believing. And if we're not curious to kind of look into all of these different ways that people can exist and coexist, then we start to really feel much more assured that our way is the only way. And why is this problematic? This is problematic because that sense of self-assuredness is far from reality. And we don't want to put ourselves at a disadvantage by allowing ourselves to fall into patterns of believing that limit our ability to expand our scope of reference or make it difficult for us to expand our scope of reference down the road. And I find that the best way of doing this at home and without completely disrupting your life is just expanding your language. And the way that we do that is with domain relativity. And I think that this is important because when we think about domain relativity, we recognize that language differs and is encoded very differently depending on the domain. So the area of expertise or the school of thought that we're considering or that we're kind of delving into. And when we understand how the same words that we can use in a general 
general sense can be different and relay different meanings and different messaging, then we become much more careful and much more aware of how nuanced subtleties in language can influence our perception. So we don't take everything for granted. We don't assume that, you know, the general understanding of specific words used is always what's at play. And we understand that there's always nuance. There's always subtleties and like different ways of perceiving and interpreting the words around us. And we only get to that state if we're constantly in a state of expansion. And again, as I said, expansion can be very language focused. And when we think about even the domains that we float within, so domains of politics, there's a domain relativity there. So when we think about the language that we use in politics, we can hear a lot of the words that we would use in our day-to-day -day casual conversations, but they're used very specifically in a very targeted way when they're used, you know, within a political sphere. And the same thing with medical. There are words that we could read and hear just in general conversation, but when they're used in sort of a medical setting, there's a shifting in the way that those words are interpreted and perceived. And I think that we don't ever want to become closed or become desensitized to the nuances that take place with the words that we use depending on the domain and the context within which they are used. And the best way to ensure that that rigidity doesn't settle in and create a very black and white way of interpreting and perceiving the world around us is by always having the dial on language expansion. And the best way that we can do this for me is like reading books, but not just like books for general consumption, but books that are written for a specific audience. And typically when I read these kind of books, I read them with a dictionary in hand. And when you have a dictionary in hand, you'll also have the opportunity to get a sense of the different ways that the word is defined based on context, based on domain specificity. So like a word could have a very different meaning in biology and psychology and just in general, in general sense. And if you don't have that sense, if you don't understand that words shift and change by way of what they connotate or what they denote, then you're just going to read it and assume an interpretation that might be false or might be less nuanced than it needs to be for you to really have a true appreciation for the material in front of you or for the conversations that you're circulating around. And I think that so many of us assume an understanding of a concept or of an idea or of an exchange or of, you know, a political position even. We assume an understanding because we're assuming that the language that they're using is aligned with the language in the way that we would be using those specific words. And oftentimes it's the little nuances that are missed that if we were to get a sense of what those nuances were, it would shift and impact our perception and the way that we interpret the words that are being exchanged, the way that we further interpret the world around us. And why do I say that? I say that because even our observation is influenced by the language we use to connote or denote the things that we see. So if we have a limited language by way of what it is that we're observing, then it's going to influence our perception within the scope of those constraints. But if we're consistently expanding our language, expanding our scope of reference, expanding our ways of seeing and being, it's going to enrich not only the language that we use to be very specific and very nuanced in the way that we articulate the things that we are seeing and the way that we are articulating the things that are impacting us, but it's going to give us a nuanced understanding of the world around us as well. And a great example of this, is you're walking in a forest with someone who is, you know, a horticulturalist or someone who has a very in-depth understanding or knowledge base by way of like different trees. You're both walking of the forest because you both are wanting to really take advantage of the experience of being in nature. You you might not have a real understanding of like the different species of trees, of the different, you know, ways that those trees sort of grow, the different aspects of that ecosystem that influence the growth and the health of the different trees. So your walk in the forest will be very limited to the language and your understanding of what it is that you're walking through or the ecosystem that you're, you're, you're delving into. But if you walk through that forest with an ecology or with someone who has a very in-depth understanding of like the ecosystem of trees, of the health of trees, of the different subspecies of trees, then it becomes a whole different world. You're enlightened to this new way of seeing and of recognizing and of perceiving based on the fact that you have now exposure to this new domain with all of the words and all of the language that feeds into that domain to really provide nuance and a lot more specificity in the observations that that person is taking in. And it's again, two people observing this 
same thing. Very different experiences of the same thing because one has a more expanded language to articulate the nuances within their environment and one does not. And we need to assume that this happens in every case, right? And that's why education is a lifelong pursuit. Learning is a lifelong pursuit because in every case, what we see can be articulated in so many different ways if we had specific language that enriched what it is that we were observing. And this is what I wanted to talk about by way of education. And this isn't just educating our children, it's about our own lifelong education. It's about recognizing that the ways of seeing, the practices of looking are influenced by the language that we use. And if we've not taken the time or been very intentional in evolving our language and augmenting our language to then augment the way that we see the world around us, then know that that's limiting our scope of reference. And we never want to put ourselves in a box. And language can be very liberating or limiting depending on how involved we are at continuously expanding our language. And sometimes how this translates is you read a couple words a day. So you learn a couple new words in the dictionary a day and you try to find different ways to incorporate those words in your day-to-day -day conversations. But other ways of doing it is just being open to learning different domains, right? So different domains provide an entire vernacular that is tied to that domain. So when we talk about the medical field, they have their own language. When we talk about psychology, they have their own language. And right now I think society's in this place of like, personal awakening and because we're trying to find words to express some of what it is that we're experiencing by way of like emancipation or just liberating ourselves from social norms and conventions and just finding our own truth and standing in our individuality, we're borrowing a lot of psychological terms that have very nuanced and have their own defined parameters for how they're used from a psychological standpoint. And so what I'm finding that because there's, there's convergence, because we're blurring the lines between how words are used in a conventional and in a formal setting, and we're incorporating these words in our general discussion, then we're not being as careful as we should about the words that we're using to describe ourselves. And some of that nuance is getting lost. So as much as we want to acquire language to gain nuance, we need to be very careful about the way that we dilute language that might stand to dilute our understanding of the nuance that exists within the words that we're using using and it's important on both sides of that spectrum. And I find that language is always evolving. So I've never really been a classist about language. And I think that when you take a linguistic perspective to how language evolves, like a language evolves within different groups and subgroups and different demographics and language is complex regardless of how it is that that language is utilized within those specific groups, right? It's interesting because like as someone who speaks multiple languages, you see how even different languages influence one another based on just dominant culture and how those cultures permeate within a given setting and even um, when I spent time in France there were English words that I understood how they were used and how we would sort of exchange in conversation with those specific words but those words were repurposed when they were used in a French context or in a French setting and I could have only understood that nuance by being in an environment where words where I was familiar with were not used the way that I was familiar with using them and I think sometimes we just assume this familiarity when we see specific words used in a specific way not recognize that that domain, the point of dissemination is a very significant indicator of how it is that we should be interpreting and perceiving the words that are used in conversation or perceiving the world around us from the perspective and the vantage of those specific words. So in that sense, language is so important and is very, very tied to perspective and in gaining additional perspective and in expanding our scope of reference. And I think that we all <laughs> owe it to ourselves to continue the expansion of our scope of reference so that we're never finding ourselves really trying to make something that is relative, something that is fairly fluid by way of how we could perceive it or conceptualize it or interpret it and making it fit in a very black and white paradigm because that's all we have. <laughs> you know, as part of how we, you know, build interpretations and perceptions of the world around us. And if you find that your paradigm is fairly rigid, like there's fairly rigid constraints to it, you find you struggle to understand something that doesn't fit very neatly in, in little boxes, then that is a signal that it's time to expand your scope of reference. It's time to build that expansion into your language. And there's so many different ways to do that. And I talk about psychology and medicine because those are areas where we very quickly understand that there's an entire different sub language used 
use when we articulate thoughts and ideas and issues within those specific domains, but that happens in politics, that happens in philosophy, that happens in literature. I mean, language shifts and changes. There's nuances to our language that we all want to keep in mind when we're interpreting conversations or when we're having conversations, when we're trying to relate experiences. We don't want our experiences and the beauty and the layers of complexity in those experiences to be limited by our language, right? We want our language to always be aligned to the complexity, the beauty, and the different distinctions in the world around us. And I think that that was an important, it's an important thing to talk about. We're heading into summer and in summertime, I feel like there's so much layers of beauty that we sort of are exposed to and I'm in nature. So like for me, like natural beauty is just very profound. And I think that it only can be as profound as the language that I have to articulate it. And I'm learning every day and with nature, especially in different parts of the world, nature involves different species, different subspecies, and it only helps me to really communicate at the depth of my experience by allowing myself to learn the different terms, learn the different subspecies so that when I speak about my experiences, I'm speaking my experience into existence with the same level of complexity that those experiences are sort of entering my, my schema, like or sort of being interpreted and internalized by my sensory percepts. In any case, I didn't want to go on and on, but I think that it is important. And I think that with a new season and new perspective and new goal or different objectives that we can set for ourselves. And I think that whatever adventures you plan on having this time of the year, plan on building language around that adventure. Try to expand your communication to better articulate how that adventure has impacted you or to better share the stories around that adventure with others. I think that that's really, really very important. And the point of conversation and our talk on education today is really about personal education. It's about really cultivating a mindset of a lifelong learner. And I hope that that's a point or I hope that that's a point of view that I've been able to get across to you. In any case, that was it. So before letting you go, I would be remiss if I didn't let you know that we will be going live at least twice a month every month for the foreseeable future on our Facebook page. So definitely be sure to tune in. These events are paid events. We do facilitate them in a way where we are providing you with the critical thinking and the soft skills to derive more meaning and fulfillment out of life. And if you do see yourself participating in our community on an ongoing basis as a game changer, then I do suggest that you take a look at our package plans. And with our package plans, you have unlimited access to our live events as well as access to our workshops and webinars over and above those live events. So definitely check that out. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love to have you as part of the family. Subscribe to all of our social media channels and we look forward to seeing you very soon. We'll talk to you later. I just feel like no one's listening.